Dear friends, I'm glad to be born in a country where women are worshipped and respected from ancient times. In fact, I will tell you, our nation is referred as Bharat Mata, meaning Matrubhumi or the motherland. Name it and you have women in every field, be it Anandi Bai Joshi, the first Indian lady to have got a medical degree, be it Mother Teresa or P.V. Sindhu. This is just to name a few, though the world is changing, women are evolving too. So sewing machine aren't the only machine women have been using, as change is infectious and change is inevitable. You will all agree with me when I say women are well known for their multitasking. Yes, don't you all? Yes, I'm sure. While she juggles to balance between her personal life, personal commitments, and she also juggles equally to keep up with her passion, her dreams. While she goes through a roller coaster ride of her life, there's a lot of mind and body changes that she goes through. While she passes her journey from womb to tomb, there's a lot of physical and mental changes that she'll be going through. But she fails to express these things. I've seen anywhere in the globe that women have always not expressed what they feel about their health issues. Especially, it could be a menstrual issue or a menopausal issue. She's very shy to talk about her fertility issues, approach a doctor for that, and she's really fearful of talking about her difficult phases of cancer. So I wonder, why are these women shying away? And as I consider myself to be getting an opportunity to be in the medical field and I feel blessed to have got an opportunity to serve the women and to make her life better as I specialize in obstetrics, gynecology, fertility issue and I'm a robotic surgeon too. Like I said, when I sit back in my OPD, I'm always wondering why are these women not talking about their problem? Why are they shying away? At times, I feel it is just that she's not aware about the problems that she's actually going through. And that is what is not making her talk about her problems. And then sometimes I feel, is she really worried about the treatment protocols involved? Is she worried that I need to be away from my family? And at times I feel she's really worried about the end result of her treatment. And this is what makes her shy or scared, not expressing her problems. So I feel it is just that we need to be reassuring this lady and educate her about the modalities of treatment that has been available to us as in the medical technology, we have progressed from trepanation days, we have moved on to all the open surgeries and then now we are in the era of the minimal invasive surgeries. There have always been uh, six lakhs of surgeries or hysterectomies in a year in the US and 23 lakhs of hysterectomies through different modalities in India. So, while we think globally, but we need to act locally, because I just feel it is all about being aware, making the right choices at the right time, because we know there is information available through the global accessibility and that to everything at our fingertips. We need to just utilize all the facilities that we have. So let us join hands in at least making one woman's life better, because women is always the backbone of any family. If a woman is healthy, we have a healthy family. And a healthy family always leads into a healthy nation. I remember my childhood ambition has always been to become a doctor. And I always keep my plan B ready. And I would have been a fashion designer if I wouldn't have got into medicine. But now I'm glad at times I will be able to integrate my surgical skills, which is the fashion designing, and I do continue to do my surgeries. Whenever I've been operating and doing my open methods, and when I come back, sometimes I feel very bad for the lady when I've made a big incision, something like this, and subsequent days when I visit her, I see that there's a lot of morbidity associated, pain she goes through, a lot of frustration she'll be going through, and this is what motivated me to get into minimal invasive surgeries, and I got myself trained in laparoscopic surgeries. While I still continue to do my open methods and my laparoscopic surgeries, depending on the case per se, if I judge the case to she needs to be going through an operative procedure of an open method technology or the minimal invasive surgeries. I feel my best days are when my surgeries are going as per my plan 
And the joyous moments, trust me, is when the lady goes back with that big smile and her confidence in her face. Worst days are when my surgeries do not go as per my plan. And trust me, more bad, which makes me sink in when I convert my minimal invasive surgeries to open method, makes me feel really sad. Because I always take my success as my patient's feedback, her trust in me. I feel no records, no achievements is equal to my patient's satisfaction. And this is what always makes me passionate about how to help her, how to do it. I always set my goals, and this is what I tell people. Make your target, make your goal, compete with yourself. Never try to compete with somebody else. Because you need to sit and see, how can I make my tomorrow better than my yesterday? So this is what makes you feel going, as I feel we are our own limitation. As I continue doing my laparoscopic surgeries, and this love for serving women has always made me put my thinking hat and then I felt, can I use some technology to make this woman's life better? Can I help her move smoothly through the roller coaster ride that she's got going through? And hence, I entered the field of technology, innovations. Every time I came up with an idea, I would think about some people who had similar ideas in different fields. And so I would form groups with them, coming up with different ideas, discussing different themes, and I did come up with few instruments, and I do have some patents on my name. My first one, which is going to be very close to my heart, the Peldaya, it is supposed to be an instrument where we assess the pelvis of the women, and that will help me judge, is she going to be delivering normally, or she has to go through a cesarean, because that will reduce a lot of mortality and the morbidity for a mother and a baby. And then I also did something called as to you, it's a minimal invasive technology where we do permanent sterilization for women, but not through surgeries. It's a minimal invasive though. And then came up with to you, I spoke about it. And then the Trust Plus, an app, which is going to help people of different sectors communicate with each other, where we are bringing up or reducing the uh, inhibitions of people talking to each other. And this is how I got into a lot of innovations and a lot of failures because some of my ideas didn't even take up because nobody liked it. And in this quest for doing something, I always formed some teams. So many teams have been formed. Sometimes I forget the teams because they didn't take off at all. But trust me, I had some success, some failures. But every time I had this, I had something to learn, something to look forward each time. And this quest of doing something for the womenhood, I was introduced to robotic surgeries. So robotic surgery came to me a year back, and then you will not believe I refused to do this because I was very anxious about the new learning curve that I had to go through. I wasn't getting younger day by day. I was getting older. I was wondering, do I have to really learn something? But then I knew I was in the technology field. I cannot complain my age. So I decided, yes, I need to be learning and going through this new curve of learning. And as well, because there was a lot of pros and cons attached to any new technology that enters the field. I had to go through, but I was always reassuring myself, telling myself, look, this is not something new that you'll be doing, because there were a lot of people who had already implemented it in their daily curricular activities. There had been a lot of neurosurgeons, there have been oncologists, there have been cardiac surgeries, there have been ophthalmologists, and including gynecologists who were already using this technology. But the problem with me is I always want to do something differently in my own way, in my own style. But then I reluctantly got into this though. But then after I got into this, by the time I'd finished a couple of surgeries, you will not believe I was in love with my new toy. I always call this my new toy, my robo. So once I started operating, then we had some patients who come to us and they would ask, robo? Are you not operating on me? But I heard about you, and this is what made me come to you. But why are you using a robo? So I had to tell her the advantages and disadvantages of a robo associated. Before that, I did go through the history, and let me walk you through the history of robotics as well. I would like to thank Leonardo da Vinci, who designed the first robot, the Mechanical Knight, in 1498. And after that, in 80s, late 80s and early 90s, there were NASA people and defense research who came up with 
technology, and they wanted some telesurgical systems to come up so that we could treat soldiers in the battlefield. So imagine doctors being somewhere else, the soldiers in the battlefield would get treated. This is what is all about robotics. And then in 1995, Intuitive Surgicals was found. And then in 2000, they cleared FDA. And the first robotic, transatlantic robotic surgery was done in 2001. Do you understand transatlantic? The surgeon was at the US, the patient was in France. There was a surgery done. Imagine this was all possible because of the technology. And then the first gynec surgery was done in 2005. But you know, we always are in a delay, though the robotics came to India in 2011. And this had convinced me enough that I need to be started using. And you know, I told you I was already in love with that big guy there. And then I started using robotics. Like I said, you must be wondering, robots, operating field, oh, okay, fine. But then you already know that robots have been there in the civil construction. It's been at homes, it's been at offices. Now, isn't it cool to have robots, robots in the operating theater as well? Yes, it is. And with all the artificial intelligence coming up, I feel robots are here to stay. But I will not say it's right now a replacement for any technology because I still cannot remove my babies. So it's not a replacement for now. But we do need our open methods. We do need our laparoscopies. But definitely robotic surgeries are something to stay. Like I said, to relieve the anxiety of my patients, I would initially explain them that, look, we have three compartments in the robo where we have a 3D high definition vision where I can see through that and everything is going to look bigger to me. How much bigger? 10 times bigger. While I did my laparoscopies, it was only three times bigger. And then the depth perception was so good, I could convince her. I would tell her, look, I cannot even see. This is magnified 10 times when I'm seeing it through a robot. It also has, and then she gets this question. So that means you're going to keep doing your OPDs and then I'll be operated by a robot. I tell her no, because there's another thing called as a surgeon's console where I'm going to be sitting and the third one is the robotic platform, which is controlled by me while I sit on the console and operate. What happens here? Every hand movement of mine is reflected onto the robotic arm. The hand movements, so good, I, you will call this 360, but through my robotic, you won't believe, it's 540 degree of rotation that I get on my robot. So much more wonderful. And imagine, I had to put my hefty arms into somebody's abdomen and operate, so I would give her a big incision, but my robot's incisions are eight millimeters, 10 millimeters, maximum is 12 only for my camera. I have single ports where there's only one scar, and I would remove a lot of problems and a lot of pathologies that would be there. If I had to do this, she had to go through a really big incision which was coming down. And once I was doing all these things through a minimal invasive procedure, this also had a seven degree plane and an intuitive motion which we call, which has got upward, downward, and which is restricted in laparoscope. My dissection got better, and since my dissections were better, I could reach the unreachable places at times that I would be worried while I was doing either my laparoscope or my open methods. These surgeries made it so easy for me that I would offer it to everybody that required it. Remember, you should always, only because technology is available doesn't mean you're gonna use it on everybody. You need to still practice ethically, and that is what I do, because every time a lady walks in, I analyze her case, and then I decide, does she need a robotic? Does she need a laparoscopy? Does she need an open method? There's a lot of advantages and disadvantages also associated with laparoscopy and the uh, robotics as well. Compared to a laparoscope, the learning curve was much better, and this is what I felt. With lesser number of cases, we could be more proficient with robotic surgeries, and like I said, the dissection was better, and there was so much of pain-free for a lady during the post-operative rounds. When I took a post-operative round, we always do our rounds immediately post-surgery, and you will not believe when I went back to her, I wouldn't see any women rolling in pain, because otherwise, I would sometimes do surgeries from two, I've done 13 surgeries in a day, and I really know the difference when two women are done sitting or lying down with different procedures sitting, how one lady is rolling over and my robotic surgery would be calm and quiet. That reassured me always. And then, 
the best part would be my next immediate post-op rounds. That is the next day. When I came in, you will not believe me, I would have ladies sitting and smiling with such big smile. I will tell you, it's going to make me feel wow. And because I always love to see the smile on my patient's face, at times we've had ladies stand at the door who would try to welcome me. And then I felt, yes, this is what we needed to make a lady smile. And there's nothing to compromise for my patient's smile. This, in fact, made me more addicted and fascinated to my new toy. As we did this, and then I was wondering, if the lady's up and about by the next day, does she need to be staying in the hospital? If she's up and about, her bowel movements are good, our ambulation is done, she doesn't have to be in the hospital. I feel, other than doctors and sisters, nobody wants to be in the hospital, I'm sure you agree with me. So it's, we should send her home. So that was another advantage that I would get with my robotic surgery, at least stay in the hospital. Like I said, nobody wants to stay in the hospital, right? So she would get back to her personal life, be with the loved ones, and she would resume to her professional commitments, and then, that too, remember, without any compromise in our healthcare. And I don't think we needed any more reassurance than this. As I continued to see that there was a lot of patients coming back, and we always follow up our patients. We had a lot of endometriotic patients, myomectomy. When I used to do my laparoscopic surgeries, we call something called as a double consent. Double consent is when we do a laparoscope, if the lady starts bleeding more, there's a problem during the surgery, we take a consent to tell, we are going to open you, and I cannot do or progress with the minimal invasive surgeries. Trust me, one year, for, less than a year now, I have not converted a single robotic so far, touch it though. So there were a lot of conversions when I was doing my laparoscope because robotics come with a better endosealers, and the bleeding is, estimated blood loss is really less, and the surgical skills are way better because I said all the motions that gets reflected of the hand from the surgeon. And these are all the specimens that we have removed through those small, minimal, invasive surgeries. And can you believe it? They all came out or it was pulled down through the vagina. But on the abdomen, you would see only millimeters of scar. What else could I ask if I can give a pain-free uh, period? If I can let the lady get ambulated more quickly, and that to all in a minimal, invasive method, I don't think we can ask, and especially on that beautiful lady, no scars seen ever after that. When my patients followed up, we would see that they did tell us that they were enjoying a pain-free period, which is really agony for her. And in turn, I had only more patients getting referred to me, and this is how we could come up with different uh, procedures and then help more uh, women come out of the agony. And then, trust me, robots had to only go in, but I realized, yes, there are some disadvantages. You know, any new technology that comes in, we are going to only have more problems. Yes, we need to do uh, talk about the disadvantages as well. You did see that the robotic was a big guy where he needs to be docked. So whenever I need to be operating, he needs to be docked, which was going to take a longer time. And since he's a big guy, he needs to be moved, and which is not going to be easy. The worst part was, when, when he had to operate on some other site, he had to be redocked, and that would take a little longer time, and our technicians need to be trained in those things. The worst part would be the guilt of not offering to the needy patients, because the instrument per se is very expensive. The consumables come very expensive to it. So think about it. What is the use of a technology if it is not affordable or accessible by all? So this is where we need to think. And the other things are, of course, as a surgeon, I'll tell you, it's so good to feel the tissues. We are missing the feel of the tissues in this robotic surgeries. So we'll have to think, so think about it. All new doors open uh, to new paths as new innovations can come up. As we are still in the initial phases of robots, I'm sure there is more technology and there is more innovations to come because we can think, how can we make life better? As we start thinking, because I feel there is no combination or no equality to an unmatched human brain's innovative thinking and an accurate or a precise movements of a machine, and this combination can only bring into new innovation where sky is the limit. If we can address all the flaws 
of the robots that I mentioned and we can think about more. Remember, addressing the right problem is only going to be a new path to new innovations. So we are going to be on the history of, uh, history of the robotics. We can address all these problems. And this is how I feel I want to sow, sow the seeds in your brain. And this is just a foot for your thought. And remember, I, as I gave you some tips to new innovative uh, methods into bringing into medical technology, Remember, no, not work all by yourself, form teams. First important, remember to meet the end user. You have to find out what is the need of an innovation. Is there any technology which is already existing? You need to find out what is the difficulty of the technology which is addressing. If you address the difficulties, like I said, the new innovations are going to begin as we address the new problems. And I feel that I believe in my own great uh, thoughts and this is what my great belief is that we need to be the part of the change if we want to bring in the change. Thank you.